Hey LinkedIn, I uh, had a call today and was just talking about the, uh, you know, how sales, many, many sales folks in B2B are drowning and need help, they need support. And, you know, the way I see it, you know, a lot of, a lot of sales folks are following up with email and phone calls and, you know, doing, doing the regular things, maybe text and, you know, just working through the cycle, but you got to give them enough steam. You got to give them enough gas to stay the course and get all the way through. And that means supporting them with content, uh, especially referring back to the Gartner report that I referred to the other day that they're saying 95% of the buyer journey is, is really, you know, pre them interacting with a sales rep. Uh, and so that means buyers are, buyers are accustomed to looking at things. They're looking at content, they're reading content, they're looking into things before they're really engaging with a sales rep. And even when they are engaged with a sales rep, I think we can all agree that a lot of people are, they go dark or they're out of communication or they're unresponsive, right? That's pretty common today. A lot of people are unresponsive. And so if they are unresponsive, you don't want your sales team to get demoralized. You wanna make sure that they have content all the way through the sales journey, which means what? Which means you gotta map that end-to-end -end sales journey looking at what what are those steps? Like start from the end, work backwards, you know, and, and there are stages. There's like discovery, proposal, proposal review, whatever the stages are for you, there's a sequence of events. We have an exact stage. Within those events, you would cascade down each and every single step. And within all of those steps, really there's content required. There's the initial teaser pitch to hook people and bring them in. Then there's the product video or the deep dive or whatever to kind of get them more invested. Then there's the, the thing that's gonna go, they're gonna use after the discovery call. Then there's the inevitably the, the questions and objections that are gonna be coming up. You better tackle those. And then there's gonna be moving into the confidence stage. You gotta make sure you have a third party endorsement in case that all the content helps support the confidence stage. And then you're gonna move into the understanding and, and uh, making sure that they, they have the knowledge, they're educated, they understand, so they can make a decision. So you have to make sure and reinforce that with stats and real world examples and so on and so forth. And what you wanna have is you wanna have a team that's got the content that has at every single stage, right? So they can follow up and follow through at every single touch point, including the sales deck, including the videos through the sales stages, including case study content, pitch sites and everything. And ideally, we're talking about 18 to 19 to 20 plus pieces of content that can be used throughout that entire thing because look, people are very unresponsive. The reality is it may take 20, 25, 30 touches to even you know, get the deal done in the first place, maybe a lot more than that. Um, and I think you don't wanna underestimate how unresponsive people are and how much shopping people are doing. Look, somebody could be even interested and want to buy, but still just be kind of like window shopping and looking and delaying. And so you have to make sure that the sales team has more than just an email, more than just a text, more than just a phone call, but enough really irresistible content that punches the problems, pushes those right buttons, and keeps this, the, the prospect, keeps the buyer in the sale all the way through until it's done. All right, last thing I wanna say, um, here we are coming to the end of the year. When I first started Richter, the first year, it was we were uh, seven months in, and then Christmas season hit, and people were telling me after the new year, oh yeah, let's talk after the new year, blah, blah, blah. I completely fell for it. I had no idea at the time. This is 15 years ago. Uh, I didn't realize because my previous company was investments and things and I didn't have to deal with that kind of thing. So I'm like, okay, think in January, but all of my deals fell through. And we ended up with a dismal December and I was like unbelievably stressed, got the flu, worst Christmas I think I've ever had. Um, don't do that to people, don't tell people. Don't tell salespeople after the new year, just be upfront with them, just tell them, hey, I'm not the right person or we're not gonna do it or whatever, because otherwise you're putting it on the calendar thing in January and then when January comes, there's nothing there. Like the, the, all, though people forget about the deal, there's nothing there. So, um, you know, if you are a buyer and you're, you're in that position, don't don't be shy, don't be shy to, to just hit the salesperson straight, just tell them, hey, uh, we're not ready yet or we're not gonna do it and 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 just be, be frank with them. Um, I definitely tell my team and, and get my team to um, not listen to that remark because everybody says it, everybody says after the new year or whatever, and really it's not actually true. In many cases, it's just that person's not the right buyer or they're not ready to buy right now or you gotta go to some other person, but reality is there's nothing happening after the new year. Um, so, you know, I mean, maybe it is, maybe it's four months after the new year, but nine times out of 10, it's really just kind of a, a no answer. And so it's best just to be upfront with people. All right, hope that helps. Uh, hope you're doing well. And uh, yeah, any comments, leave below.